If you're serious about taking your landscape photography to the next level, then you're going to want to hear these four strategies of accelerating your landscape photography in 2024. If you commit to these strategies, you'll take more photos that are better quality, you'll be outside more, and you'll be way more at peace with your photography process. These are strategies that I've learned over a 12 year career of being a photographer, plus hundreds of discussions with other professional photographers about their journeys. So these are definitely going to help you to start now. I mean, there's no better time to start than the present of implementing these concepts and strategies to take better photos. And these aren't like composition tips. These aren't like uh, your exposure tips, your settings tips, but these tips are so much more important than those because these tips become a balance in your life. These tips become a habit in your life. You're knocking out bad habits by removing these things and you're implementing good habit strategies by doing these four things. The first strategy is to find gaps in your calendar. And when we're talking about calendars, I know everybody's busy and everybody has things that they need to be doing from one day to the next and you have your daily routine and your schedule. But there are always gaps in your calendar. And I'm not even talking about hour long to two hour long gaps. I'm talking about just little 30 minute chunks that you can use to accelerate your photography and get outside taking more photos. Let me tell you a story real quick. When I was first getting into photography, it was around 2010, and I was really excited about going out, taking photos, being outside, but I was having a hard time finding the ability to get outside and take photos, let alone go to those places that I had loved seeing on social media. Some of my favorite photographers were photographing on a daily basis, or so it seemed. When I really started to look at my schedule, I started to find little 30 minute gaps that I could either wake up earlier or stay out a little bit longer. Now, I had a full time job working 40 hours a week plus for a local city government, but I also had a family at home. I had obligations for volunteering at church and other extracurricular activities, plus just hanging out with my friends. My schedule was pretty busy. But I did find little gaps. For example, when I discovered that I was taking just enough time to get into the office right on time to start work at 7.30 a.m. every single morning, I thought, what if I just got to work 30 minutes earlier? Or what if I left 30 minutes earlier? That would give me more time to take photos that were along the lake in this city government that I would be able to go out and take photos at. There were little opportunities like this that I was able to take and go out and get more photos. Now, it did mean that I had to wake up 30 minutes earlier, but in the grand scheme of things, I was willing to do that to have the opportunity to take more photos, practice my photography, and get outside more. Not only did it allow me to get outside more using just 30 minutes extra a day, you don't have to have a lot of time to do this, but getting outside more and taking more photos, but I was able to really be a master of locations. We'll get to that more in just a little bit in the podcast, but being a master of your locations means knowing everything that's going on, all these little nooks and crannies that you can get to when you're going out to take photos. And these are super important because you can find some beautiful locations no matter where you live. Whether you live in New York City, Lincoln, Nebraska, or San Diego, California, there are tons of places that you can go and find that are small locations that don't get a lot of attention, but they're also beautiful locations. And if you don't believe me, when I actually launched my photography journey, making a business and earning money with my photography, one of the things that I did was join local art shows. And I was actually selling the exact same photos that I found gaps in my calendar for going to these local locations, being a master of my local locations, actually getting out there and selling these photos that I was taking at these places for $900 a piece. So it does benefit you in the long run to go out and try to do this. Not only was I going and leaving 30 minutes earlier for work, but I was also after work spending 30 minutes a day 
in these local locations trying to get some sunset photos. This was at 4.30 p.m. and I discovered that in the winter time I was able to get sunset photos going up until 5 to 5.30 p.m. in these local locations. So depending on the time of the season you can also get out and get some unique shots of weather, seasons, all these other things that you can do as a landscape photographer as long as you're finding these gaps in the calendar. I know we're all busy, but we all have 30 minutes. Maybe there's a show that you watch mindlessly in the background that you would get up off the couch for to go and take photos. Find those gaps in your calendar and get outside way, way more. The second strategy that we're talking about is actually limiting your gear. And I know when you're first getting started or maybe you want to improve, you're like, well, if I could only get that camera or if I only had that lens in my bag, I would be able to get this composition or this photo. I'm actually telling you to limit your gear and reduce the amount of gear that you're taking because the limitation of gear actually frees up your thinking to take more creative photos. The more gear you have, the more cluttered your mind becomes of all these options that you have of going out and taking more photos. If you limit the amount of gear that you actually have, you free up your mind to see new opportunities and new photos that you have. Not to mention your bag gets way, way lighter, which is a plus in my book because I hate heavy bags on long hikes. If you free up your gear, you can take better photos. Trust me on this. Now, you may be saying, okay, I don't want to pack all my gear on my shelves and have them gather dust. You don't have to do that. What you can do is actually sell some of your older gear on sites like mpb.com to allow you to earn money that you can put in your bank account and save for trips to go and take more photos. Or what you can do is put that in your bank account and stow away and save up for some really good prime gear that you can get once you're ready to make that jump. Limiting your gear is really important here, and it's one of the things that I did when I was first starting. I had a camera, a wide-angle lens, and a 70-200 to telephoto lens, and those were the only three pieces that I would go out with besides my tripod. Now, if you don't believe me, take it from the master of landscape photography, Ansel Adams, who perfected landscape photography in its heyday. Ansel said, there's nothing worse than a sharp image of a fuzzy concept. What he was talking about here is having the ability to create a concept of a photo in your mind and then taking that photo and executing it. When you have so many pieces of gear, this goes with the point that I just made just a second ago, when you have all of these pieces of gear that are lugging you down, not only making your backpack heavy, but making your mind heavy of too many decisions that you have to make in the field, your concept becomes fuzzy, cluttered, you're not really knowing what to do in the field, how to take these photos. There's a lot that goes into what you want to do as a photographer. When you're like, hey, I've got one lens to use here, what should I do for the composition? And then you're immediately skipping the gear that you need to decide between, and you're ultimately going directly to what type of composition you can make using the gear that you have. Going from that step to composition instead of deciding on gear is going to help you take way better photos because you're not worried about the gear that you have. What you're worried about is what the photo actually looks like and that should be point number one, what you're trying to do with your photography. Focus on composition instead of what gear you need to be using and you're, you'll see your photos accelerate in the quality that they are in just a few weeks time. Trust me on this, I did it when I was first getting started just using those two pieces of gear and just a tiny mirrorless APS-C camera. Now, I, I want to hammer this home because Ansel actually had another quote that he said, and this is probably one of the quotes that I refer back to so often when I'm out taking photos and I'm overwhelmed, I'm cluttered with decisions to make, not only that, but how do you make a composition out of what I'm seeing? He said, the single most important component of a camera is the 12 inches behind it. What did he mean by that? Well, the camera obviously is important. We have settings to choose from, we have composition to decide on, we have lenses to select. We have so much going on, but 
He said the most important part is the 12 inches behind a camera. What is 12 inches behind a camera? It's your mind. If you're going out and you're taking photos and you're focusing on what your mind is doing, that 12 inches behind the camera from where that image goes into your retina and reflects off of the back of the brain and back into the eye so that you can understand the concept of what you're actually seeing, then you start to understand what makes a better photo. What's going into the composition? Where on the corners am I finding little areas that are imposing on this composition that are gonna distract me from the main subject? All these important decisions on composition and settings of a photo are so much more important than the gear you're actually taking out. Now, I'm not saying that you need to completely eliminate gear from your equation. You can get to that down the road. I mean, if I ask everybody watching and listening to raise your hand if you're a gearhead and you love photography gear, cameras, lenses, all that, I mean, everybody's hand would shoot up right away. But if you focus on composition, the technique that you're using behind the camera, that 12 inches behind the camera, you're gonna start to see your photography get so much better in the short term, which then leads to astronomical jump starting in the long term. So definitely take this advice and heed this because this is gonna help you so, so much in the long run. Now, number three is take more photos. I know that sounds a little weird and you're like, Dave, obviously I want to take more photos. Obviously I want to get out and explore more. Obviously I want to take better photos. But if you take more photos, you're going to start to see yourself escalate in the quality of the photos that you're actually taking. That acceleration of the quality. More practice in turn is what achieves the better photos. If you talk to any photographer, they're saying, you know, if they take a few months off, they're gonna knock off the rust in the first few days that they're out at a location. It's the same thing with sports. Do you think Steph Curry goes out and shoots, uh, you know, lights out three pointers if he doesn't practice at all, if he doesn't put in those reps of actually shooting? One of my favorite quotes was from Kobe Bryant. And he said, he was asking in an interview, you know, what do you do if you're not making shots? And he said, keep shooting. He said, what do you do if you keep making shots? He said, keep shooting. He said, shooters shoot. It's going to come to a point where if you're not making shots, they're going to eventually start to go in if you put in the work. It's the same thing with photographers. We're shooters too. We just shoot differently with a camera. So if shooters shoot and you're finding yourself in a rut of not taking enough photos, get out and take photos. Because once you start exploring, taking your time, eliminating the clutter in your mind with that elimination of gear, then you're starting to go out and you're starting to shoot more photos and you're seeing better photos. You're Not only that, you're starting to understand what you enjoy as a photographer. And that above anything else is the most important part. What you enjoy as a photographer is gonna help you out so much because it's going to help you hone in on what you wanna focus on as a photographer in your subject matter. And then not only that, but it's gonna help you in the long run of taking more detailed, exact photos when you're out there. You know, if I say take more photos, I also want you focusing on being a master of your local locations. I mentioned this earlier in the podcast because being a master of your local locations is going to help you when you're finding these places and it's going to help you shoot more. I can remember when I was getting started, I would often look at other people's photos and I would say, why can't my photos look like those? It wasn't until I realized that I was only wishing I could go to the same locations instead of putting in the work that I didn't see any improvement of my photography. But once I realized that, I saw improvement because I was putting in the work in places that I actually could go get to, but I was just so fixated on getting to these places that I couldn't financially afford, I couldn't take time off work to get to. If I focus on the places that I could get to and the opportunities that were at the tips of my fingers, then I could go out and make better photos. Remember, I was going out and selling these photos at local art shows for $900 a piece when I was first getting started. So you can absolutely do this. 
take your photos to the next level in local locations where not any other photographers are going to be. You're not going to see any other photographers out there taking photos at these places because you're the master of these locations. You know, I can go back to two other Ansel Adams quotes on this same topic, and he kind of goes in the opposite direction here, but I will say uh, there is a caveat to this. He says 12 photos a year is a good crop. That's one great photo a month, but you can't make great photos if you're not out there taking mediocre or bad photos at the same time. So you have to get out there and go shoot. Ansel also said, I knew my destiny when I first experienced Yosemite. Now, we're not able to go to Yosemite. All of us can't go to Yosemite all the time, but Yosemite was in his backyard. He was focusing on his local location. Lucky enough to have Yosemite as your local location is pretty awesome, but I bet you have, you know, State Park X. Uh, national forest, fill in the blank. You have local locations around you that you can master and be the Ansel Adams of if you're willing to go out and find them, put in the work and explore. Now, to be a master of this, there is a problem that, uh, that comes up because you can find yourself in a rut of taking the same composition over and over in these places that you're visiting over and over and over. I would, I would encourage you to take the one lens challenge. Uh, and the one lens challenge is this, is that you actually only go out with one lens when you're visiting a location. So a wide angle lens one time, the next time you go visit, only take a telephoto lens. That'll help you getting, getting the ability to see these places multiple different ways with multiple different lenses. And that will in turn help you out visualizing when you do get to go to Yo a Yosemite and you do get to go to a national park, whatever you want to visit and take better photos because now you have the ability to visualize what this scene is going to look like with this specific lens or what this scene is going to look like with a different lens. Now you can go out and visualize these places and do a much better job photographing them. Strategy number four is be willing to be patient. Photography is such a massive journey and there's a huge difference with being willing to be patient and saying that you're going to be patient. If you're going to be willing to be patient with photography, you're committing to a decade long process of learning, relearning, erasing what you already learned and learning some more. There's so much that goes into photography and there's always changing technology that it takes patience. So be willing to sit back and be patient about the process and about the journey. Because if you're not, what's going to happen is your camera will start to sit on your shelf more and collect dust because you become more frustrated in what you're going out and doing. You can't see things right away. And you know it's been said that the human's concentration has actually reduced to the point of below that of a goldfish, which is not only surprising, staggering, but also shocking and slightly a bit concerning. So if you think about this, you need to commit to patience and be willing to be patient with this process because if you just go from one thing to the next when you're jumping around, maybe your goal isn't to start your own photography business. And that's great to have the self-awareness to be able to do that. But if it is not that and you're just a hobbyist photographer, you're just going to jump from one hobby to the next if you don't commit to that patience and willing to be patient. You should take it from me because I know it more than anybody else. I jump from one thing to the next outside of photography all the time. You know, right now I'm on hydroponics gardening. In the past, I wanted to learn the banjo, but you know, right now there's a banjo sitting in the corner of my office that hasn't been played in months because I'm jumping from one thing to the next and not doing a good job of focusing on one specific thing. So instead of jumping, what you're doing here is committing to pay and in turn committing to excellence and acceleration with your photography. Being patient, being kind to yourself and not beating yourself up that you missed a photo, your focus slipped here, or you didn't get everything tack sharp or you didn't get this composition right. Being kind and patient with yourself is going to pay huge dividends for you when you do start getting out more serious with, with, with photography and actually going out and taking 
photos in some of these extreme places. If your goal is to be a professional photographer or to just have a side hustle of photography or just make money with, with your photography or just win your local photo club's competition, you need to be patient with the process and start getting out there more. All four of these things are going to help you out. Not only are you going to be benefited by limiting your gear, you're also gonna be benefited by going out and taking more photos. You're gonna be benefited by the commitment to patients, and you're gonna be benefited by the gaps in your calendar. You're going to find time to go out, take better photos, while also being patient in the process with less gear, and all those start to come together. Do you see how these dominoes are starting to fall of getting in the right mindset to take better photos and then actually executing, finding the time to go out there, being patient and executing your vision as a photographer. If you declutter not only your gear, but your schedule and your negativity around your mindset of photography, you're going to start to take better photos. And in 2024, this next coming year, you're going to start knocking those dominoes down and that happen, when that happens, they quickly tumble. They quickly fall right down in a row and you become a much better photographer. And when next year ends, you can look back at it and say, you know what? I look at what I was taking in the beginning of 2024, the beginning of last year, and you can look at it and say, wow, look how far I've come. It is an amazing feeling to be able to do that. Now, you don't have to wait until the beginning of next year to do it. You can start right now. You can start immediately. And in fact, I would encourage you to do that because once you do that, then you're starting that journey early. Think about if you started before the first of the year began, how much further along you would be by the end of next year. So if you do that, if you're just if you're listening to this later on in 2024 and you're thinking, man, I missed the mark of this, I didn't get started on time, start now. I mean, there's no better time to start than the present of implementing these concepts and strategies to take better photos. And these aren't like composition tips. These aren't like uh, your exposure tips, your settings tips, but these tips are so much more important than those because these tips become a balance in your life. These tips become a habit in your life. You're knocking out bad habits by removing these things and you're implementing good habit strategies by doing these four things.